soon as 4.30 Eastern. Thank you, Christy. Anna Heath, you told me in the makeup chair that you thought the prosecution blew it. I think they did a horrific job today, Dr. Drew, and after their what? job on cross-exam, I think there is a chance for acquittal here. And hear me out, okay? This is a tough defense, but come on. These are the same prosecutors that prosecuted the Zimmerman case. They made the grave mistake in Zimmerman of putting before those jurors that reenactment tape so that the jurors got to basically hear Zimmerman testify without him being subjected to cross-examination. That was a huge mistake, so they didn't want to make that same mistake here. So they didn't play the interrogation tape of Dunn, so they forced him to take the stand. Great strategy. But what happened here? In the, when they had the chance to cross-examine him, all the prosecutor did was ask open-ended questions, allowing Dunn to talk, 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 instead of asking pointed, direct, yes or no questions. Their biggest day turned out to be their biggest fail, and I think there is a no, high chance. Ali, Ali, Ms. Ali, what did you make Stop. of this today? Absolutely. Uh, last thought, you look like you really wanted to say I, something. I'm saying okay. the guy just seems smug I'm frustrated. and, uh, oh, and self, yes. self satisfied. Oh, well, What's that? Let's, let's just clear up the facts. First of all, he's not going on a stand your ground immunity. He's arguing right. self defense. It's two completely right. different things. So let's get that straight, number one. And number two, the fact that he was able to take the stand, it's all about credibility. And he was giving the same consistent testimony on direct and on cross. I mean, cross examination is when the, when the prosecution has a chance to to poke holes in his testimony. They didn't do that. And they did Yes, that. they did. All right. Well, listen, yeah. Jenny, Sam, Wendy, Erica, and for the first time on the Behavior Bureau, Anahita joins the Behavior Bureau. <laughs> and the story we thought we knew about this deadly nightclub beat Anahita as our legal person on the Behavior Panel. Does that change your mind about the case? That definitely changes the, the whole complexion of the case, Dr. Drew, because now you have certain individuals that will testify at trial that it was FAM that was the aggressor, and then you're going to have other individuals that will testify that it was the defendants that were the aggressors. So that uh, muddies uh, the right. water, and well, any time well, there's confusion, the water, but that I, benefits I, I saw, the defense I, in this case. I, I, I saw Sam going, uh, Anahita, I know you didn't. <laughs> yes. Prosecuted, you know, in, yeah. in, a, in a murder trial. That's just what I feel. Anahita. This girl was killed. Anahita. What is your prediction on this case? Yeah. My prediction is I think it's too soon to tell. I think they have viable self defense arguments here, especially now in light of the fact that there could one. be reasonable doubt. But, no Dr. Drew, let me lay down the law, please, for the last time about something that you mentioned and I think one of your other guests mentioned. In these self defense cases, there's always people screaming out, oh, they're blaming the victim, they're dehumanizing the victim. You have to understand that when you are arguing self defense, you guys, you have to show that the defendant feared the victim. So, what do you do? You don't portray the victim as some innocent, lovable angel that would never harm a fly. That's not self-defense. You have to show well, that that victim was someone who was aggressive, someone that was scary, someone that you feared. So and, that and, is what's going on. We saw this so complaint in Joey we have defense Arias. attorneys like on the video. Everyone's uncomfortable with <laughs> yeah. it, but here we go. Thank you, All right, Dr. we're going to stop. Stop this.